The next thing we're going to talk about is how to set up tool frames. Now, the tool frame is a way to change where the robot believes is the center of its tool. As you recall from a previous lesson, when we turn on Teach Pendant and jog and rotate, uh, all the rotations go about that little green dot there, which is where the center of the tool is. We can change that center of the tool to account for the uh, grippers or vacuums of a robot. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to set up a tool frame which will extend this dot out here as if we had an extension arm on the robot and the grippers were out here. So to do that, we're going to press menu, set up, frames. And here we're in the tool frame setup. Currently, we don't have any tools. We are using tool one, which is our active tool. To actually change your active tool, you can change it in the program, which I'll show you later, or you can change it by pressing shift coordinate. And there's your tool frame, your jog frame, and your user frame. We're not going to cover jog or user frame. You can look them up in the manual. They can be set up in a very similar way to how I'm going to set up the tool frame here. There are actually a few different ways to set up the tool frame, but I'm only going to cover one of the ways because most of the time you're dealing with a tool that has specific dimensions, such as the tool is um, a thousand millimeters away from the robotic arm and uh, about a hundred millimeters down uh, from that straight out line becomes the actual center point. For tool two right here, we're going to press detail and we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it <coughs> extended arm. Now for the X axis, we're going to say it's a thousand millimeters uh, offset in the X direction. Just for reference, the X position is here. It might look differently because the six axis may be rotated and we'll have to check that. But that is what we're going to use as a reference right here. And our Y is not going to have any offset. Our Z we're going to say as a negative 100 millimeter offset. So this will change our tool frame from right there in the center of the six axis to a thousand millimeters out and a hundred millimeters down. So when we change our tool to tool two, we can see where that is. Now it's actually right there because of where we have the six axis rotated to. I'm going to display two screens for the moment. Go over here, press position, and we see the position data of the robot at the moment. We'll go to, actually we'll go to joint. The six axis is at about 240 degrees. So we're going to rotate that and the fourth axis back to zero just so we have something to work with. So. So we can actually see the uh, actual representation a little easier. So we'll go to joint. We'll speed it up. Just press shift and up. And we need to drop the six axis in the negative direction and the fourth axis in the positive direction. So we're just going to get these near to zero and then stop them. Okay. All right, so they are both close to zero now. The fifth axis is also a bit oddly shaped right now. 
we're actually going to draw that one down. We're actually going to put this one in the negative values because uh, you normally don't have that near zero. We just want to extend this outwards. So here for our reference is the new tool frame. Now from the way we have this, the tool frame is set so the z-axis is downwards, the x-axis is outwards, and the y-axis is that direction. Because we did an offset in the z direction and the negative uh, z direction, our tool frame actually went up. So that's not exactly what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to 100. And now it's down exactly where we wanted it. Now let's say this orientation was not what we wanted. Um, it's honestly about preference at this point. If you want the Z to be down, then by all means we can keep it down. But if you want to rotate these for whatever reason to make it easier, we can do that. So we can rotate the yaw to negative 180. Or 180 makes no difference, and the uh, frame has been rotated. Now, remember we have an offset of 100 millimeters in the z direction. That was before this rotation offset, so it's still below it, and we're okay with that. So we have now set the tool frame as we need it. The thing to remember about tool frames is when we touch up a point, it's actually saving the tool frame when we do this. So when we go here and press position, it's in tool frame 2, whereas the other ones we've been touching up have been in either no tool frame or tool frame 1. Alright, so there's, um, oh, sorry, that one was a position register that does not have a tool frame uh, referred to it in, at that time. Our user tool is for this position right there. So, if we've done this right here and we wanted to move to a position with a different tool frame, we would not be able to. Oops. We would get an error right here. And to view the errors, we press menu 4. And I usually just do type alarm log. Alright, so continue request, uh, system and error status, invalid user tool. Uh, you, uh, the tool frame number mismatches. So, this does not work. In ordering to change tool frames like this, we actually have to put it in the code. So, we go to offset and frames. I'll show you again where that is. Go here, offset, frames. And we change the tool number to 2 right here. In this section up here, we were using tool 1. So offset and frames, user tool 1. So we want to make sure that we set user tool 1 when we are using the positions that actually use user tool 1. And we want to make sure we set user tool 2 when we are using the positions that have tool 2. If you ever try to go to a position when you have the wrong tool, it will give you an error and fault out. But overall, this is what the user tool uh, is for, is so that you can offset it right there. And since we have it right there, when we jog, along the tool frame 
it will rotate about that point right there so it, it, that will always stay the center this is the same if it was world because we have this user tool frame set okay so now that you have a good understanding of how to set that up there I want to briefly mention the other ways so there are other methods I'll make a mistake, to set the tool frame there's three point and then for three point you would have an odd shaped tool that you don't exactly have the measurements for and let's say there was a point on this tool that you want to be the center point what you do is you move that center point to a certain location usually you would have some sort of pin sticking up and you would move the robot down till that tool center point touch that pin and then you touch that up then you move the robot around and move it so that uh, it touched the pin again from a different angle you'd like to rotate the wrist at 90 degrees in this way and then rotate the wrist another 90 degrees and touch it again the reason this works is by you uh, rotating the wrist for each of these three points with the wrist pointing this way this way and this way it's able to calculate where your center of the tool should be these other methods here you can work with and try as you want they are in the manual I just wanted to briefly mention uh, the, where you would find these alternatives here you can also set up the jog frames and user frames and remote tool center point from this screen here we're not going to cover those they are very similar to this and you can work with them on your own time uh, during some of the exercises you can tinker around with them and see what you can do